everyone, this is Downs Life and Safety, and welcome to today's pretty cool video. Alright everyone, we're going to be taking a look at this Hochiki SS-FC-10HC heat detector that came from Taiwan. Uh, now, Hochiki does happen to manufacture these for the Japanese market, but of course they decided to export some of them to the Taiwanese residential market. Now, I, when I went to Taiwan, I thought it would be cool to have a Hochiki device of my own. Uh, you know, when we think of uh, Hochiki, we would think of probably the more commercial style fire alarm systems that are installed in buildings. They happen to, I think, they either make them or rebrand them. But I know in Japan they probably make their own devices and all that fun stuff. But, um, you know, we usually think about the uh, commercial fire alarm industry that Hochiki is in. But in fact, uh, in the Japanese and Taiwanese markets, Hochiki is very prevalent in um, in residential fire alarm systems uh, like this one. Um, they actually do happen to make these that are compatible with more complex systems, uh, but of course being um, being sort of limited in where the when I was at the hardware store, you probably have to get it from like a commercial contractor or something like that. Um, I could only find standalone devices and not uh, wireless devices. Though I think they did, Hochiki recently came out with a redesign with their smoke detectors um, just, you know, as part of their way of being able to encourage people to buy their products after the 10 years of the smoke detector life expectancy is up. With this particular one, I don't think, I think the components or the electronics might wear down, but the detector itself is probably going to be good for quite a long time. Um, about the detector, this is a standalone heat detector that activates at 50 degrees Celsius or I think 135 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly around uh, there. Uh, it does feature a test hush button. It's a little bit of a speaker and I think this does, um, I have to figure out how loud this is, but uh, I think it is around the same range as the Panasonic. It's probably 87 decibels, which is a little bit more on the quiet side compared to the North American detectors, but it still happens to be pretty uh, noticeable. So this detector is in service. Uh, I just decided to take it down because I don't want to bother my family members any further because this is the um, I, I recently recorded the verification demonstration um, that hopefully you guys have seen put up already, but uh, I think that bothered them enough, so I don't want to disturb them a little bit more. So I just decided to take it down and demonstrate it to you guys. All right, with that being said, uh, we are going to be using the, the press, pushing the button. Oh, and one other thing about the push button, there is actually a little bit of a notch over here uh, that lets you push, and unfortunately I think it's it's kind of disabled, uh, but normally, uh, for smoke detector, you would be able to have the option of being able to uh, use a string and pull on this little thing so that the button can activate and you can test it without having to climb a ladder. Uh, but I guess with the heat detectors, they don't really come with that because, well, um, <laughs> I don't know why, honestly. Well, this was actually made for kitchens, and I'm actually pretty confident that this will work if there's ever an actual fire in the kitchen. Um, granted, this is not supposed to be a life safety device, so uh, disclaimer there, if there, it will not detect smoke. It only is designed to detect actual fires, uh, not the deadly smoke itself. So I was installing this when, um, actually, I think it was maybe about an hour after lunch, and you could actually feel the heat that was in the ceiling. It's, it, it gets pretty hot whenever, especially when you're cooking in the kitchen, so I'm pretty confident that if there's ever a fire, then it will go off. All right, so... We're gonna first go ahead and push the test button and we're gonna set it off. By the way, this does use a 10-year battery that is sealed inside, so once it dies, then it won't work anymore. So let's go ahead and test it. Uh, with this particular test, you don't have to push and hold the button. All you have to do is push it and it will sound a test alarm. Okay, it just said that the alarm was normal. All right, with that being said, we are going to use a nice little hair dryer to set off the alarm. Uh, this, I think this blow air that is above 50 degrees Celsius, so it should be okay to use. I don't, and this is again fixed rate, so I think by the time it, the surroundings get, it detects that it's over 50 degrees, so it will go off. There we go. And it's silent.
silence itself because it it probably was just not really hot enough. Uh, so yeah, now we know it works. I'm not quite sure why it decided to not go off, but I'm assuming it's just because the, the dryer was probably not close enough. Um, now one thing that kind of bothers me about this uh, detector is when it says Hoji, that is literally you can translate it as fire alarm. Um, roughly, I could, I think you would probably translate it as like the fire alarm's going off or the fire, this is a fire alarm. Um, it's, it's similar to how I think, uh, I think it's Gent that does this back in the UK, but uh, Gent alarms happen to say, this is a fire alarm. <laughs> Essentially, this detector is doing the same thing. It's just saying fire alarm uh, if you want to directly translate it. But I think it, it probably would imply, it probably gives the same message that, hey, this is, the fire alarm is going off. You probably need to do something. All right, with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this very wonderful video. If you happen to have any questions about this device, feel free to drop it off in the comments. And with that being said, I will see you guys later.